Hey guys, RTL here. Today we're going over patch 8.22. In this patch, we see a lot of changes, but they're finally starting to touch the champions that need to be touched for the longest time. First one I'm going to go over is the Akali nerf. And again, Akali was nerfed uh, in this patch. They basically made it where her W cooldown is a tad bit longer early on than what it was in the past, which is fan freaking tasted because that W, which is obviously her shroud, is just ridiculous. It makes it where you cannot even trade with the champion. The nerf is fantastic, though. They made it where it's four seconds longer early on, which makes it where you have more outplay potential, which is something that really is lacking in the Akali matchup. There isn't much outplay potential versus this champion. Also, what they did too with her as well is they made it where her R has a tad bit less base damage early on, but it scales a little bit as the game goes on, which, again, I'm kind of cool with it because the early game is what really is just completely disgusting right now. Now, with that being said, I still think Akali is still S tier regardless, and I'm still going to, she should be picked or banned regardless, and it's not even that because her W or whatnot, it's because her kit in general is just broken. It's just a broken kit. Whoever made the champion kind of messed up with this champion. Um, you know, someone like, you know, Zoe and stuff like that. But hey, we're going to do so much, right? On to the next champion, it is the Victor nerf. Well, kind of. It's kind of a Victor nerf. I, I don't want to say it's a complete nerf to Victor. Um, because it's really nothing crazy. Like, if you look at it, what makes Victor really good right now on the top lane? Well, it's the fact that he Qs, gives him a shield, and then he constantly keeps doing that pretty much every single trade. Every, like, two, three seconds, he gets a shield on top of movement speed. It's like, bro, what the fuck? Like, how can you trade with a champion that keeps getting a fat shield every time? They didn't touch that. They didn't touch that in this patch. They uh, they made his base damage just a little bit weaker, but that's not really what makes him annoying. What makes him annoying is the shield and the movement speed. So, again, still going to be a top-tier pick in the top lane, regardless of what they did here in this patch, which really isn't much. So, don't really expect much changes there. Another thing they did, they touched up on Fiora. Um, Fiora is always a scary champion to mess with. And, again, she keeps getting little buffs every single patch. And here's another one where it's kind of another buff as well. They made it to where her vitals are even more like... If she has a proc there, it's going to target you 100% now. There is no question that if there's a vital on you, it's going to target the vital over anything else, regardless of where she puts it. If it's even nearly remotely to it, it's going to proc the vital, which gives her a ton of health back, does true damage, you know, all that fun Fiora stuff that she has in her kit. So, yeah, again, it's not even crazy. There's no stat changes, but the fact that it can do that is, I don't know, it's just yikes. Fiora's always a scary champion to mess with, so we'll see what happens there. Another champion that I wanted to at least bring up in this patch is Maokai. Okay, so Maokai is a champion that has not really been messed with at all for the longest time. It's been a champion that's been non-existent in the top lane pretty much almost the entire season 8, you know? So, obviously now that preseason buffs are kicking in, they touched up on Maokai and they're actually trying to bring him back, at least some way, somehow. So basically they made it where his E is going to do even more damage early on with a little shorter cooldown. So that was 10 seconds instead of 11 seconds. Um, do I think Maokai is being played now? I don't really think so. I still think Poppy and Sion are still the way to go. You know, when it comes out of tank top laners. You know, even our guy phone account him as a tank top laner as well. But yeah, I still think those are still the priority targets. But Maokai does become more interesting in the fact that they are starting to touch him up a little bit. We'll see what ends up happening. This might be just a buff that goes in for more maybe a Maokai jungle over maybe Maokai top. Again, we'll see in this one. We'll see what happens there. One thing that I thought was missing was, um, you know, the Irelia nerf. I really wasn't touched this patch. Not at all. I looked around. I looked twice. I even looked three times. I didn't see Irelia nerf. I was like, wait, huh? You know, as a Renekton player, it doesn't really bother me too much. But as other champions, again, everybody else is thinking, God, I really is stupid. You know, and her team fight is disgusting. Um, I get it. The whole five movement speed is going to change everything, right? So, you know, it's just, we'll, we'll, we'll see what goes on there. But I just cannot believe that really was not touched at all. Considering they touched up on, you know, Akali, they touched up on Victor. They, you know, they touched up on a lot of these champions that are really doing well in this current meta. But they didn't touch Irelia. So, that's interesting. Now, there's a reason why Jax wasn't touched in this patch. Um, and that is because of Time Warp Tonic was nerfed. Which is pretty significant okay again i've been talking about what Jax lacks and that is obviously he lacks sustain in the early game true damage but obviously conquer and time or tonic gives that stuff well now they nerf time or tonic um it makes it where it's more a little more interesting i think it's a little less health they gain um but the big thing is is they took away the movement speed you are not going to get movement speed for time or tonic now which is 
freaking insane because if y'all don't know Jax, he'll literally proc that freaking uh, corrupting pot and then boom, just run at me. I can't run away. Doing axe damage from corrupting pot, getting a lot more sustained because of time warp tonic and then corrupting pot. So it's just kind of a gross scenario of things going on. So they touched it up and I'm so glad they did. It makes that matchup much easier. It makes the Urgot matchup much easier. Um, pretty much any champion that runs Cyborg Tonic, it makes it much, 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 much easier. So current build for Renekton that I am currently running. Again, I've been trying a lot of new things out as of lately. Um, but this is a build that I think is pretty fun to do. Obviously, y'all know already about the, uh, you know, my Black Cleaver, Essence, Reaver, Stairs, Gage, GA, and then Titanic uh, build. Um, but I'm gonna go over a different build that I've been trying out in solo queue a lot lately that I'm really enjoying. Um, it is a very feast or famine build, as in it's literally going to do a ton, a ton, a ton. I'm telling you, 1v9 kind of kill potential, okay? It's actually ridiculous. But there are cons to it as well, uh, being that you are very, very squishy. Okay, so the build uh, goes as this. I'm usually going to go PTA, but there are chances that I do go conquer. It depends if they have a tanky top laner or not. Um, but I'm usually going off the top laner. If he's a Scion, I'm going to go conquer. If it's a I really or pretty much anybody else, I'm going to go PTA. So there's that. I'm still going Triumph. Um, I'm still preferring Tenacity over anything else because obviously the little is the CC would be nice to get out of it. And Tenacity helps with that. Um, but if they don't have that much CC, then I will go Acrility. Um, and then obviously Last Stand. Again, Last Stand is 100%. I'm using that over Coup de Gras every single time. Um, now the other trip I'm going into is Sorcery Tree. Okay. Um, I know it's not Resolve Tree, I know, and this is where it goes to all really, really squishy aspect, but um, I really feel like the 6 AD is needed. I feel like I really, really need it considering my Q, W, and E all will scale with AD, so just having the added AD is really nice. Um, to amplify that AD, I'm actually going Gathering Storm and Transcendence. Uh, so, Gathering Storm, obviously, and Transcendence, they do not help you out early on at all. They do nothing for you um, right when the game first starts, um, but they obviously help you as the game progresses. Um, the reason why I'm going Transcendence is because I'm stacking CDR with this build, which um, I'll go over the build after I'm done with the runes, but I'm stacking a lot of CDR, so it's giving me a ton, a ton, a ton of AD, which again, helps with my Q, W, and E. Also, Gathering Storm. It was kind of like either Gathering Storm or possibly using Nimbus Cloak, uh, one of those two things, um, but I feel like I have enough utility speed. Uh, with the items that I go in this build that I don't really need that but instead I can just stack even more AD as well to make it where my one shot potential or 1v9 potential is even more insane okay so the build that I'm going with with the uh, root page is that I'm obviously still going team at rush that is still the ultimate goal in my build so typically I'm gonna be starting long sword consumable or I might be doing my three anal beat start it just depends on the situation and the matchup the next item I get is you moves ghost blade again not much has really changed there my full AD builds I really do like what Yumus does because I have a lot more roam potential um, and then obviously lethality is really nice in a full AD build so that's really really nice and it just has a lot of utility in team fights too again you can proc the ghost blade proc in a team fight and now you have able to get even more stick on the you know targets that might try to kite you away next out of my go is essence reaver again I really really like essence reaver ever since they made it where it's 200 gold cheaper now it's only 3k gold for the stats that it gives you I think it's ridiculous and there's no way I'm not going this item again once you have essence reaver good luck trying to 1v1 you really strong in team fights just a really good item overall that i think is just absolutely fantastic and bonkers the next item i'm going is ga again we're not going to resolve tree we are very very squishy so i feel like ga third item is kind of a must because at this point in the game we're starting to do team fights it's probably 25 30 minutes in the game so it's like we need that ga proc really really bad you know to be able to team fight at a very high level you know having that second life can be the difference between you know just Instantly dying and possibly getting a triple quadra kill because you come back to life and just wreck their team some more The next I'm going is black cleaver and again you move as enough stick It does a lot of stick but at this point in the game 80 carries have even more cop potential than they ever had before because supports are now having items give them more you know Resistances cleanses whatever 80 carries have more movement speed because attack speed items get movement speed for some reason So they have a lot of kite potential So having that phage proc from black cleaver again can be a difference for more stick and all that and then plus black cleaver has 20% CDR which stacks with transcendence also has armor shred again very very good um, Together with this entire build again it's a full AD build so very nice to have 
Last but not least, I'm finishing my team out and giving my Ravenous Hydra. Again, Ravenous gives you 80 attack damage, and then they actually use some life steal as well. Um, which again, that sustain in team fights can be really nice. Um, it can also help in 1v1 situation as well. By having that sustain, it helps you where if you are in a 1v1 situation, you can life still back up in any situational fight uh, that's given in the top lane or even in team fights itself as well. Now the boots. Um, I'm going Tabby's or Merc Treads, but there are situations to where I might even go Lucidity Boots this patch. Again, if you are running Transcendence, um, think of it this way. Think of it this way. Um, Lucidity Boots are 200 gold cheaper than Tabby's and Merc Treads, okay? And again, I'm the guy that, you know, that's cool and all that fun shit, so I do a lot of weird things, but Lucidity Boots is the thing we've been trying to 1v9. I'm telling you right now, I've been testing a lot of weird things out, and I'm kind of liking it a lot. Um... It gives you 10% CDR. Um, think of it as it's giving you 12 extra AD on top of what you already have. Um, a big thing that Renekton needs, especially if you're going Assassin or Renekton, is Flash. You have to have your Flash to be able to be successful in team fights. And Lucidity Boots actually makes it to where your cooldown reduction um, for your Flash actually goes from 300 seconds to 270 seconds. So you're really saving 30 seconds on that. And then obviously your teleport also has a shorter cooldown as well because of it. But again, that's very situational. If they're a full AD comp, then obviously go Tabbies. If they have a lot of CC, obviously go Merc Treads. But if they're kind of lacking in both those areas, um, then hey, why not get Lucidity Boots? Give it a shot, tell me what you think. But my thoughts on Renekton uh, overall, for everything considered, I think Renekton's gonna be in a very good spot this patch. Pretty much every champion that's been given Renekton in tough time is running Corrupting Pot, which is, uh, you know, Time Warp Tonic, so good for Renekton. Or, you know, they're playing Akali and things like that, which obviously got touched up on this patch. So again, I think this is a very good patch for Renekton. And the one thing I love about it too is, guys, we have what, like a good five days left of the season? So five days with a new patch where a lot of champions that have been spanned in top lane have gotten at least a little nerf or something. So, hey! We have a chance. If you guys are close, if y'all are fringe getting diamond, if you're fringe getting plat, gold, silver, bronze. Okay, hopefully not bronze fringe. If you're bronze fringe, just stop. Don't, don't, don't play. Don't play. Don't go to bronze. If you're silver five, do not just stop playing. But you know what I'm saying? If you're like silver one, gold one, plat one, diamond one, make that grind. Get the finish. Hell, guys, I'm going to be going for Challenger um, this entire patch. So uh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm very, very excited. This happened now. So it gives me more of a chance to make this rush, guys. To make this rush and finish strong. Good luck and salute to you guys. And as always, hey, have a great day, boys. Deuces.